Well, my friend, they have done it. The Detroit Red Wings have a few prospect news updates that we're going to be talking about here today. We've already kind of hinted at this kind of idea earlier in the year, but it's finally come to fruition, and I think it's worth a video topic, shall we? So let's talk today about Moritz Sider and another Red Wings prospect that we haven't mentioned Pretty much, like, I think we only talked about him in one video ever, and that was the Detroit Red Wings Prospects tier list video. But today we're talking about Cider and the other guy here, it is Casper Kotkinsalo. And these two are in the news because both of them have confirmed to be going to Europe for next season's worth of hockey action, at least for the beginning part of what would be the season, quote unquote. It comes from Helene St. James, who published an article yesterday on the Detroit Free Press speaking about how the Moritz Sider train is going back over to Germany, that the Red Wings have loaned their sixth overall pick from the 2019 draft to Adler Mannheim officially. It's a move that nobody is really too surprised about, but it's one that I think warrants discussion anyway. If you've been following the videos we've made about Moritz Sider, you would have known the story and you would have known the context as to how we got to this point. Moritz Sider was drafted by the Red Wings, sixth overall at the 2019 draft, after playing a season with the Adler Mannheim in the DEL as an offensively limited defenseman. I say that because back when he played with Adler Mannheim, they told him, hey buddy, you're 17 years old, you're big, you're right-handed, you're solid, you're good enough to be here, but we don't want you to play just yet to your max capacity in the offensive zone. We want you to double down in your defense. First and foremost, you're a defender, so we're going to make sure you focus on your defensive game. So we had a draft year that wasn't all too spectacular in terms of the numbers, but his play was good enough to get him a sixth overall spot, and after spending a year with the Grand Rapids Griffins in the AHL, Moritz Snyder ended up getting 22 points in 49 games played. Certainly not bad for an 18-year-old rookie defenseman in the AHL. But because of the pandemic, because of the virus, he actually went back home to Germany and he started practicing with his old club, Adler Mannheim practicing in several groups, breaking up with other guys into subsections of the team and doing some very intense high-velocity cardio workouts. This means that Moritz Sider is actually not really going to be going anywhere, and in fact, it's a situation where Ryan Martin, the assistant GM of the Red Wings, said is very fluid. But our agreement is that we can recall him at any time. We think he's in a good spot. He's on the ice, he's practicing with Mannheim. That's probably the biggest, most interesting part of this whole loan agreement, that the Red Wings will have the ability to recall Cider at any time. This should not be a surprise, but it will give the Red Wings the opportunity to give Cider some playing opportunity to show off what he's learned in Grand Rapids with a brand new stint in Germany, and by the time November runs around for training camp, or maybe even wait until December 1st for the NHL to actually restart and get regular season games off again, they can recall Cider, they can shove him into the lineup, and we'll go from there. It gets even more interesting when you consider the fact that Tim Stutzla, projected top two, top three pick in the 2020 NHL draft, is indeed on the team as well, and Cider spoke about it in an interview recently where he said that playing with Stutzla and practicing with the guy, it's pretty nice because they're good players and, you know, good players attract good players. So who knows, if the Red Wings get a little bit lucky in the draft and have another situation where a player falls into their laps, like Philip Sedina did in 2018, where let's just say Lafreniere goes first, Byfield goes second, and I don't know, maybe a Lucas Raymond goes third overall, then they're going to have a chance to draft another Adler Mannheim player two years in a row, and two guys who have probably had the opportunity to develop chemistry by the time December 1st rolls around. So that's our first big piece of prospect news. Our second big piece of news is Casper Kotkansalo, a guy who we've only spoken about once, but a guy who is notable nonetheless. He is a 6 foot 2, 198 pound D-man, 21 years old, born in November of 98, drafted by the Red Wings in the third round of the 2017 draft. He's unsigned, but that's because he spent his most previous years playing with Boston University in the NCAA. 
noted mostly as a two-way defender. He's a guy who hasn't really had the best production over his past three years in Boston, but he posted on Instagram earlier this week speaking about how his time at BU has come to an end. Check out the caption over here. A bittersweet feeling saying goodbye to BU. Due to the pandemic situation, I've decided to stay in Finland for the upcoming season. I'd like to take this chance to thank Boston University and all the people involved through my three years there. Over the years, I made so many great friends and unforgettable memories that I'll forever be grateful of. Thank you to my coaches, trainers, managers, and the whole athletic department for helping me out. Also, a huge shout out to all of the fellow athletes and friends I got to meet outside of hockey. Finally, thanks to all the boys for making my time special both on and off the ice. It was then posted later on the Porin Asats website that they are getting themselves Casper Code Cancelo services for their next upcoming season. Their website says it's a one-year contract, so we'll see what happens with Cocansalo in his first pro year outside of the NCAA. And let's just go back over to this Detroit Free Press article from Helene St. James for some quotes on the situation. This is also what Martin says. It wasn't a joint decision. Code Kinsalo informed us that he was considering the move to Pori, but there wasn't a lot of communication from our end. I think he made this decision more with his family and in conjunction with BU as opposed to just us. He asked our general impression as to the uncertainty of the college hockey season and how it would set him up for next year. And we gave him our thoughts in terms of where he stood in our depth chart and the opportunities for next year. As for the actual point production that Cocansalo had for a guy who's really considered a two-way defenseman who can get some shots on, how come he only got as many points as he did? Well, this is what Martin said over here. When he got to college, he struggled a little bit with his identity and what role he was going to play on the team. When you go to a really deep program when they're continuously bringing in high-end players, you have to fight to stay in the lineup every night. You've got to figure out what your identity is, and he had some challenges with that early on. To his credit, in his third year, he found more of what was going to make him successful, and that's being a simple, meat-and-potatoes, stay-at-home defenseman. A guy that can make a good first pass. Those are the things that he's going to have to do to have success at the pro level. Be a guy who is hard to play against, and physically, he is a strong player. He just has to find that consistency in his game, like a lot of young players. So there you have it. It turns out he wasn't really that big of a two-way guy anymore anyway. The scouting report all the way here on Elite Prospects from 2017, Cote Cancelo does possess a full arsenal of shots from the point and has the hands to make some plays in the offensive end. That doesn't really seem to be the case anymore. Nowadays, Cote Cancelo's bread and butter is the meat and potatoes, stay at home, breaking up plays, sending the puck back out kind of style. So it's actually really interesting to see how a guy was able to go from a teenager who exhibited two-way qualities up until a guy who's 21 years old playing his junior year in college and acting more as a stay-home kind of guy. So, next season with the Porian Asad, I honestly wouldn't expect a whole bunch of points, especially if he's trying to grow and develop that style of game that he really honed in on this season. So, for next season, we could honestly see Cocansalo being more of an underrated prospect story as the year goes on, and by the time that contract expires and he comes back over to Detroit for training camp, or maybe Grand Rapids or whatever, we may have our hands on a potentially NHL-caliber prospect a few years down the line. So, that's Casper Cocansalo, the other Red Wings prospect who ended up going over to Europe within the past few days. And that wraps up our Red Wings prospects news video here. So, talk to me in the comments what you think about Casper Cocansalo and Moritz Sider, and how you think these two are going to do once they suit up for their new teams in Europe. For me personally, I would honestly expect Sider to have a lot more production than he did last time he was with the Adler Mannheim, because now this is a guy who's honed his game and who's logged up 25, 27 minute nights in Grand Rapids. This is not the same 17 year old kid that the Adler Mannheim put the training wheels on a year and a half ago, this is a completely different beast. As for Code Cancelo, I honestly think he probably would get a few good looks here and there because he's played on a Boston University system that's just kind of stacked in general. So he was able to keep up there. Let's see if keeping up with the Porin Asat is next up on the agenda. But tell me all you think in the comments below. I know there's a lot of people who are fans of both of these prospects, so I'm looking forward to reading all your reception. I hope you enjoyed this prospect video. So there's a troll sign and bye.